Okay, so now I want to animate this. And when I animate it, I'm going to change my frames down here so I got 25 frames. And when I do the 25 frames, um, actually, let's just hide my bones. I can put that onto a layer and I can call that skeleton underscore layer. I always put the word layer in it so that if I select it, you can kind of see over here the input skeleton. You can see it's a layer. Anyway, I can hide those so I don't see them. Because all I want to do is animate the controllers. <clears throat> um, so I got 25 frames. So what I typically will do is I'll grab this controller and I'm going to put it down here. One, I kind of lower it down. I'm going to hit S. Go to frame 25, S, 13, 20. I'll keyframe that. I'm just hitting S. Go to 7. And I'll make this kind of go straight. And I'll hit S. And if I do a trick here, if I middle click drag, I can go over to 19 and hit S. And so that's exactly the same. And now I just check out the animation. <laughs> and if I right click, I'm just going to go here to uh, playback speed and put it on real time. There we go. That's better. <clears throat> and then I'm going to grab my little controllers here for the feet. And I thought I froze the transformations on those. I swear I did. Okay, maybe I didn't. That's weird. The scale values look funny. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and hit modify. I think I can still freeze them and it's not going to affect me. Okay, good. Let's go to frame one and I'll pull these ahead like this and I'll hit uh, S and 25. I want them to be identical. Then at 13, I want them to be back here and I'll hit S. I don't want to pop the IK handles, just enough and kind of check the animation. Okay, that's looking good. And then between 13 and 25 here we'll stop at 19 I'll pick them up in the air okay and I'll hit S and it looks like I could change some of the weighting here you can change the weighting at any time now I'm getting this okay cool and let's just stop that for a second and I'm gonna go here to um, window animation editors graph editor <coughs> And in the graph editor, there's my animation for my feet. In particular, I'm really just worried about this one. And I'm going to go to, uh, let's go to view, and we'll view infinity. So we can see the keyframes before and after the animation. You can see they're flatlined here. If I go into curves, I do post infinity cycle, we can see it cycling off forever and ever. Okay, and then what I do is I typically will go to frame 13, I grab all my keyframes. And if you want to, I, I don't know, I select just the curve. Sometimes if you hold down M and you drag through it, this is a new thing in 2017. That's the way to grab your curves. You have to hold down M to get them. If you go into the select menu and turn that on, it constantly flicks off and it's really freaking annoying. Anyway, if I hold down shift and I have my move tool on over on the side, I can middle click and drag them like this. Now they're identical on both sides and I get this kind of behavior. Okay, so I got a nice little walk. And I can start to play with this. Um, I can do th other things like at frame uh, 19, for instance, this foot, you can put it anywhere you want. Oh, maybe that doesn't work so well. Okay, right there. Oh, I screwed up. Well, that means that probably I'll have to go into my hypergraph and find that knee control that I hid right here. And okay, I got to bring that up and that'll fix that. Okay, great. But now I can go back here and I'll hit S okay and you can get away with that <clears throat> okay and I probably wouldn't keyframe the knee controls I'm just gonna keep them hidden and then you can see some other problems made with my waiting but whatever I'll leave that for now okay actually I'm just gonna undo that I like it better when it's just a casual walk okay good enough and anything else uh, that should be good for now. Oh, hold on a second. I can play with the hips a little bit. So let's do this. Um, if I'm looking at this, so we're putting weight onto this leg. Okay. I might think about moving this over a little bit and I'll hit S and I'm just going to middle click onto this frame here and S. I keyframe them so they're identical. And then I'll go this one here. I moved it over 0.13 or 1.3. Take this one, I move it over 1.3-ish. Great, and I hit S. Then when I press play, 
<clears throat> okay. And then I can do things like at 13 here. Actually, at frame one, this leg here should be leaning in and down. S, and I'll middle click over here, go to frame 13, and then this one here will be leaning in and down. S, check that out. Okay, so that's better. Um, then there's a little thing here when I go a couple frames ahead, really when the weight goes onto this leg, this hip typically goes up a little bit. Boop. I'll do the same thing, 13, I'll go two frames after 13 to 15, and I'll do kind of the same thing here and see what that looks like. Okay, and I think I'm getting grief from this one here. I'll just stop that for a second, because this one I'm getting grief from. Okay, just acting a little bit funny how it's kind of twisting back and forth. Um, at frame 7, if you actually looked at this, the weight's not in the right place. It should be over here, so I'm going to put about 1.3-ish here. That's, and at 19, it probably should be over top of here, about the same. And let's try it out again. Okay, so now I'm getting a, a fun kind of walk cycle. And you can crack that hip even more here and it looks funnier for whatever reason. Boop! Okay, and boop! <clears throat> and if you have the right music... Uh, actually, you usually need 80s music. 80s music works the best. Uh, I don't know if I've got anything here something. Okay, anyway, we'll call that good enough. I might bring those down. If I take a look at my rotates, this is a rotate Z, and I could probably go and hit F in the keyframes here, and I can see my keyframes are crazy. And I'll just go in here and I'll uh, grab my scale tool and I'll middle click from about this point and drag it down, and that'll make this all much subtler. Did I grab a rotate? I did. I'm grabbing the scale tool on this and everything's fine. Okay, cool. Okay, make it subtler. <coughs> okay, I'm going to stop this. So we've got the animation figured out. Um, I'm going to do one more crazy thing. It's in my brain. What time is it? Okay, 7.33. Okay, let's put in the one other thing in the animation that uh, I want to go here to the skeleton layer. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to create a polygon primitive plane. Let's make this bigger, and I'm just going to remove all of this geometry from it. Okay, great, so we're just dealing with an edge. I'm just going to hide my pants for a second. That sounds strange. Okay, if I go in and I grab this edge, and I grab my move tool, and I hold down V, I want to snap it and line it up to that joint. And this one here, I'm going to snap it and line it up to that joint. And I'm just going to take these two edges, and I'm going to scale them out from each other. Okay. And then I'm going to do something weird here. I'm going to grab this edge and edge ring, edge ring split. And I'll do that again. I'll just hit G and G. So I got these four faces on here. Okay, I didn't do this in class. It's just something that's in my brain. I grab these four faces and I hit extrude, control E, and I pull these up a little bit. And I go down here in the extrude, keep face together. I'm going to turn that off so that I can do this. Okay, cool. Okay. <clears throat> and that should be good right there. I'm just gonna go in and modify, freeze my transformations. I gotta put that on my shelf. Okay. And um, I'm just gonna delete my history on that. And what else do I want to do? Uh, I can hide my skeleton again. And I'm just going to bring back one other thing I want to do in the graph editor. Windows, animation editors, graph editor. I'm just going to find the uh, the translate Z, and it's this one right here. These two keyframes. If I just make those linear, there's a little button right here that makes them linear so they go straight. And I'll do that on the other curve too. And when I look at it, it's this one and this one, I bet. Translate Z, those two was one's right there. there, so they're straight. That gives them a consistent speed when they're moving. Okay, <clears throat> and um, then if I were to take this and I figured out that um, 
let's see. At frame one, if I move the pivot point of this, I'm just going to move the pivot point. I'll hit uh, D and V. This is not part of the uh, exercise that you have to do. I just want to do it just for visual sake, something in my brain. Move the pivot point there. Um, and then um, I were to make a duplicate and I hold down V and I move this this far here. There's a little distance right there. I'm just going to copy that. So that's basically the length of this piece. Boop. And I can take that and delete it. Okay, so if I take this one at frame one and I were to uh, hit S, or actually I don't even have to hit S, I can just go here to the translate Z and I'll key selected. And then I go to the last frame and I paste in that number that I just had and I hit enter. And I didn't know that was a duplicate, whatever. Okay, great. And I hit right click key selected. So now it moves across here to consistent speed. Okay, and delete that. So this here follows the foot almost. Um, I have to go back into window, animation editors, graph editor. And if I just hold down M and I grab the curve and I make it linear as well, or if I made it automatic, there we go. Okay. And <clears throat> so now that follows the foot. It's not actually doing what I was hoping it would do. Um, screw this idea. I, I might try and edit this out. Actually, I'm going to pause for a Okay, so I went and I played with this and I got it so that it was working so I can kind of tile whatever just for something weird to do. Um, now I just want to quickly put in some lights and I'm going to do, we can do this simple. I could go in here to create lights and we got like a dome light. We can check out what that looks like. The dome light might be kind of weird with what I'm trying to pull off here. So if I render, okay, and there's the Maya software render, which is going to be horrible. And you know what? I can't change. Oh no, did I crash? I didn't save. Just hold on a second, I'll see if it comes out of it. Okay, it came out of it. I'm just gonna make sure I go here to File, Save Scene As, and we'll... Remember, whenever you don't want to repeat something, save it. I should have done that a while ago. I should almost be doing it after I model or partway through in modeling and then when I lay out UVs, when I rig, when I animate. I'm uh, just going to switch out of Maya software and go to V-Ray and see what happens when we render. Okay, now we get the V-Ray render. Okay, so you want some kind of floor so you can get a shadow. The dome light's going to give you this kind of nice kind of overall general lighting. Um, I'm just going to hit escape right now. Right now when it's rendering um, oh, you bastard, I hit the wrong thing. Um, I want to go here to the render settings, and I'm going to quickly change them. Uh, a few things. Overrides. I'm going to give viewport subdivision. You can see this is kind of clunky right here. Okay, we'll explain the other stuff later. And if I go here to V-Ray, uh, instead of progressive, I'm going to go to adaptive. And I'll change this render division here to 32. I notice that goes faster. Um, settings, what else makes it go faster? Default displacement subdivision. I like, I like five, three or five, somewhere in there. That'll make that go faster. You can actually turn up the dynamic memory limit so you'll render faster there as well. Um, and anything else I want to show at this point? I think I'm going to keep this relatively simple. Um, yeah, I don't want to show you that yet. Okay, and that should be good. So, <clears throat> and now when I render, you see these little buckets show up. Okay, these little boxes. Those are called, referred to as render buckets. And it's rendering over the image. And it kind of will try to clear up some of these, uh, some of the noise in the render. Actually, maybe that's one more thing. I'm just going to hit escape here so I can stop the render. Maybe one more thing to clear up the noise. Eh, no, I'm not going to show that. Um, so the dome light's going to give you this overall lighting. I might decide to do one other type of lighting here. I'm just going to take my dome and get rid of it. Um, if I go here to create lights, let's go in and create a rec light. And the rec light, 
Um, if I go here, panels, I can look through selected, and I'm just going to zoom out a bit and see if I can huddle myself over the pajamas there. And let's do this. It's up here someplace. Okay, and if I render now, okay, everything's quite dark. If I go in and I look in the attribute editor at this thing, I can change the size of it, and that will brighten it up. Okay, and so that's giving me a fairly bright image. If I play with the directionality of it, you can actually see in the background here, directionality is doing something. It actually concentrates it and turns it into kind of a spotlight. And it's looking really bright and hot. Hot Trump pajamas. I'm just going to hit escape and I'll bring down my size again. Make those kind of s smaller. See what happens. Okay. And there, this is looking a bit better. And you might see there's still a bit of noise on the edge and stuff like that that I'm not maybe particularly crazy about. Okay. That noise, um, if I want to get rid of it, um, I might go and show that in V-Ray, there's a DMC sampler, use local subdivs. Okay, and then if I go back over here to uh, the s sampling subdivs, if I turn that up to say, I'll go to 32. Usually I'll just double it first. And if I look in here, and I'll put on this little red box and I'll render that again. Let's smooth that out. There's something different here. They've changed something I'm not aware of 100%. Okay, I'm going to have to go... Oh, I'll horse around with that later. That should have cleaned it up. Um, let's turn that off. We'll just say this is okay for now. Um, and I can put in more lights in the scene as well. So... Um, couple different ways to do that. We could just take the same light here and I can make a duplicate of it and then I could go and pull it over here and go panels, look through selected. Come on you bastard! Look through selected and I'll go this way and maybe this one here will come in from the back side here and I can um, take the uh, size and make it smaller or I can adjust the intensity multiplier so it's smaller as well and when I go back here to perspective and I decide to render this And I might make more of these funny little panels, or you can use an infinite plane, you can use a polygon plane, make a big floor. I might notice I don't like the shadow being cast from behind. Um, with the second light here, uh, where is it? Are my cursor's having a moment. Okay, maybe I don't like that shadow from behind, I just want the shadow back here. If I just go into um, options, I can make it invisible so you don't ever see it. And I can also um, make it so it doesn't cast shadows. Hold on a second. Effective use specular reflections. Okay, double sided. Oh, there are shadows. No. Okay, so you'll see if I render that again. There'll be no shadows from this light over here. I put on this little thing, it'll follow my cursor. Okay, great. <clears throat> I'm just going to hit escape so you get the general idea. And then, after I finish lighting, and I could use spotlights, or not spotlights, rec lights, sphere lights, and the dome light, they can do good things for me. Um, then, what I can do to finish this whole thing off, we can render this a couple different ways. Um, if I go into the render settings, uh, what I'll do, simple, simple, is to go into common, and if I look in the animation section, it's disabled. I'll make it standard, and then I can pick 1 to 24 frames. Okay, and we got frame padding of 4, anything else you need to know in here? You can pick out different sizes if we want to. Okay, that'll be fine. And as soon as I hit render right now, What's going to happen is um, it's going to render through the first image. 
And here, I'll let it just do its thing. Music makes it more exciting. Go on, just a little bit faster. Hopefully, I don't crash. Okay, it rendered the first one, and now it's rendered the second one. Now it's going through. Okay, and rendering the second one, moving along. Um, and as it's doing this, uh, it's going to go through frame by frame down here, and you can see it. And uh, then we'll take a look at the images in just a minute. I'm going to pause. Okay, so it's finished. Uh, it went through all 24 frames, and if I go here to File, and I go into View Sequence, and I take a look, there it is. It's going to load up. And it looks like mine didn't work perfect, but I had the funny idea I should have uh, done a bit more work on this, on the lighting and stuff like that to make this work. But there you go. There's your animation. And View. You can go full screen here. You can, if you click, you can scrub and check out your animation. Maybe I should have made it go up in the air a little bit. Anyway, whatever. And I should have maybe organized a really nice shot. This shot here is, yeah, it's okay, but nothing special. Actually, it's not okay at all. It's horrible. Anyway, that's it for this little video.